gbogbo yin ba wa nlo bayi ta lo fe ku si nigeria eh oko lo iyawo lo o mo mo da ni o tun mu ya na o tun mu ya yawo da ni se be la yin le to ni agba ti bu ari pa nigeria je to po o ti ba ye ni ja je e wo aruru awon to ko nigeria se gbo lori ibu lori ibu ni o lori ibu ni gugu baba mu ari baba mu ari ti ba Wow, this is what we are facing in Nigeria today. Everybody just the japa anywhere better than Nigeria. People are running. And even the people that brought this Buhari to power, even Tinumbu is in London, Atiku lives in Dubai, is just here to campaign. So you see the japa, if you make another mistake, 2023, the japa will be worse. We go line up from Ikeja to the airport. Use your brain. All right, so according to an article by Chijioke Iremeka, the satisfaction with the state of the nation has continued to propel mass emigration of young Nigerians for greener pastures abroad with fear that the situation could further have dire consequences for the socio-economic well-being of the country. The mass exit from Nigeria tagged Jakpa or Jakpa caused by high level of insecurity, unemployment, infrastructural deficit, hunger and failure of the various level of government to provide opportunities for the youth to live their desired life and achieve their dreams is becoming a social epidemic. Though a risky adventure, as evidence has shown, many young and elderly Nigerians are bent on leaving um, the country in which they have lost hope of opportunities to realize that they are uh, to realize their life ambition. A large population of or a large proportion of the population blame the government or Buhari for the state of things in the country. So today we're asking, is Bubu, <laughs> is it to be blamed for this massive migration out of Nigeria? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038 You can also tweet at us at Africa. Um, one with the hashtag we show. All right, so ladies, um, let me quickly read something that I saw, right? They say that migration, or what do you call it, that people may choose to migrate for a variety of reasons, such as unemployment or employment opportunities, uh, to escape a violent um, conflict, environmental factors, educational purposes, or just to reunite with families that have probably have left the country. If I look at the country today, right, and globally, right, there are issues. What we face in Nigeria is not really unique to us as a nation. Yes. If you're talking about inflation, the UK, everybody is suffering it. You understand? It's not unique to us. So why are we not having other people say, oh, they want to come to your country, they want to come to Nigeria? The only people rather that come to this country are foreigners that have understood how where the money is mm -hmm. and how to get the money. Because while you're leaving your country, some people are coming into your country to take on your resources. Mm -hmm. So this particular syndrome, the Japa <coughs> syndrome, mm -hmm. it, is this really a direct link to our president? Do we blame him? for the movement, or this is just something that people just need to just own up that, no, I think I just want a different life, I want a better life, you know, and I don't want to be in Nigeria. Because if it, it is for opportunities to probably earn an income or whatever it is, yeah. those opportunities are more here. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine left Atlanta to Nigeria. Lady like like left Ireland to Nigeria. Utis left the UK to Nigeria. I know a lot of people that have left this same first world countries back home to Nigeria. Do you understand? Because they say that, come, this money is here. So is it fair on our part that every time things like this are happening, we are quick to blame the government? Let me come to you, that oh, you're okay. looking at me. Glory. Uh, and I'll come to like Because when you say, is it fair, it's now like it's an emotional... But it's not emotional. Let's be <laughs> realistic. Uh, okay, so bring... So okay. if you don't want to talk emotions, bring facts to me, yes. please. Um, Nigeria is like a system, it's like an organization, and every organization there is the head. And that is the reason why people cannot come and say this department, they, when something goes wrong, the first 
um, finger points at the head because people naturally expect that the head has that control, that authority to put things in place, to make certain decisions that we perceive positive impact within that organization. So that's why people are very quick to say Buhari. And people live in Nigeria, right? The reason why they call Buhari is because he is the head of Nigeria, right? He's a figurehead. So he has the ability to take certain critical decisions. There are times when people are complaining of inflation and the president will come um, on national TV and act like nothing is going on. So naturally, people will say, what is going on? Why is he behaving? Why is he talking like this? We've had these countless times where people complain. And you can see it's practical. These are not just messages. You can see things, the prices of things are going up. There's inflation. And, and there's so many... Okay, Rory, it's like you're saying. Let, let's be factual here, right? Mm -hmm. If you're talking about prices of things going up, prices of things are going up everywhere in the world. Yeah, true. Everywhere okay. in the world. Do you know my, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make. So for every time I see these kinds of videos, can we just please put aside political, you know, um, conversations mm -hmm. and stick to the facts? If you're talking about inflation, everybody in the world is suffering it. If mm. you're talking about the hardship, everybody in the world is suffering it. Okay. If you're talking about employment, it's not all these first world countries that have employment. Um, they, I mean, they have a perfect employment. They also have employment issues. deficits, right? Yeah. So there are issues everywhere. So if you want to leave the country, say that I want to leave the country because, you know what, I feel I might get a better chance at some things that I want to do for myself. Not put the blame on okay, somebody no, else and the say, difference because between, this person, that is why I'm leaving. No. The difference okay. between this and that is the fact that when those things are happening there, practical steps are being taken to resolve those issues. And that is not the same case in Nigeria. All right, things are getting worse, and see policies are being put in place which are worsening the situation. Mm -hmm. And things are so that is the difference between so these other countries, when things are bad, you see them first of all, there's a communication aspect. The top, the people at the top, they feel the emotions of the populace, the local populace. But that is not the same here. It's like we are in a different world, like there's just this high class and this very low class, and there's just a disconnection in communication. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. And people want to feel like their emotions are being felt by by the president, by the top officials, which is not what we are getting. So naturally, if you keep crying and you're crying to your parents and they're not listening, one day you want to leave home. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. They got okay. run away. May I speak now? Please go ahead. First of all, let me give you a chop knuckle. <laughs> Glory Michelle Williams. You found a shine today. I personally think, with the experience of having lived in a second country, that as you see me sitting down here, I have an option to jackpot. And until I secured it, I didn't feel comfortable about coming to sit in Nigeria. I want you to hear me well. Some people say I don't speak about it because anything can happen, but it's the reality of life. I'm a mother first, and my life is important for my children. So what did I do? I secured an option B. So that if I come to Nigeria to test the waters and things don't work the way I want, I can jack back without waiting for a visa. So I too am a Jackpa, a waiting kind of person. When 2023 comes, if things don't flow, I will jackpa. Um, but no, I haven't finished. Why do I jackpa? In a country that I'm coming from, like you said, the government, the people in charge, are sensitive to the issues that the citizens are going through. We've never gotten a social welfare system working. We don't have a database completely right. So we don't even have the right amenities to cater for people when an emergency comes. If I live in Ireland and I don't have a job, or my job doesn't cover my bills, I can go to the Department of Welfare and tell them I earn this, but my expenses are this. They will augment my salary. Those are the options people are going to fight for. They will augment my salary and not leave me hanging. They believe that everybody should be able to afford conflicts. Everybody should be able to afford milk. We are not able to buy kennels, but we buy Tesco value. That's the difference between this country and the other country. Not everybody is there. Conflict should not be luxury. Some drink should not be luxury. They have grades of different things mm. that everybody can taste it. It's not only the rich man's child that is eating hot dog. Do you understand? It's not seen as a luxury or something for the rich man. The one I won't be able to afford is top of the brand. But I will eat hot dog. When our country and our government starts thinking of things that way, that everybody can find their level. They say London is a level. The reason being that 
everything the rich man is enjoying, poor man will enjoy. Now the quality will feel different. That's why people jump. Over to you, peace. <laughs> <laughs> I am peaceful right now. Because yeah. people are trying to humble me. Yes. But I stand my ground. <laughs> you know. So now the know. question is, I like how you have uh, was it was laid the foundation based on what you've said, and that's the truth. We don't have a social welfare system in this country. I know people that, you know, even when the COVID pandemic hit, mm. right, um, people that were out of job for that period, mm. they were given some stipends. I mean, my sister, Abroad. yes, my yes. sister that didn't work for a period of uh, COVID, she was shocked when she got a call that, you know what, um, because you have not worked because of the pandemic and all of that, they credited her some euros in her account and she was wondering, ah, she they said she went shopping. They moved back dates to the time. So they moved back dates to the So, so, so we, are, we are getting somewhere, right? And I like where Gloria landed when she talked about the systemic issue, mm -hmm. right? So now I will still fall it back to the question. Mm -hmm. Is this a... The fault of is a this the fault of a Buhari? Okay. And the answer for me is no. Not so. You know, no. Is this the fault of a Buhari? The answer for me is no. Right? Buhari is not the problem. And that is why I would always say, as Buhari is not the problem, so is a Peter Obi not the solution. Yes. Do you get my point? As this is to this, that is how that is to that. As we say, because you see, the reason I am emphasizing this is because when 2023 happens, right and someone like a peter obi comes into power you know when someone like peter obi comes into power you know what then will happen right there will be something like this happening and guess what nigerians will do again ah peter obi is the problem no peter obi is the problem peter obi is the problem do you understand whoever sits on that seat is, is, is will be the problem yes because for as long as this continues right the system is is um what's it called not properly structured we will always have massive mig uh, migrations like this so that's why i'm saying to you that let us isolate the human being from this problem buhari is not to be blamed he has Yes, he's not to be I can't isolate, can I speak? We cannot, but go ahead. Let me let you speak. When Obasanjo, Baba Obasanjo came in, having experienced military rule, coming in as a civilian, I realized that he went around different countries trying to get our loans patterned to first take us out of debt, get our reserves high. That is a leader. Buhari hasn't done that for us. He's cost us more money put generations to come in debt that he knows we may never come out of. You are a mathematician, you would understand what I'm saying. The reason why we're blaming him, I think you made a mistake by saying he's a figurehead. Not meaning to say that, but I see he's a figurehead. Because he's not consulting with the right people. Whenever he takes a break, medical break, and Oshibajo comes in with free hand, you see an improvement in prices of oil and everything. We will blame him. But Nigerians have this thing that they always do. Benefit of hindsight. When somebody goes, we say, if we had known that one was better than where we are today. Where Israelites in the wilderness, always complaining about, let us go back to Egypt because this thing is not okay. It is our way. Buhari is your turn to take it on your head now. But when Obasanjo job was there, he preferred solutions that made us have an improved life. And people still complained about him and said, Baba, go slow. Baba, go slow. Nigerians cannot be satisfied. Okay, so let me come to you, Gloria. You are mm. an accountant, right? Mm. And you know, when a company takes out a loan, mm -hmm. not every loan is a liability to that company. Some loans are actually assets to the company. To because adult. guess what? You are using those loans to acquire more assets that would give you capacity to build. Mm -hmm. So I was at an event today um, they give funds to SMEs. They give funds mm. to businesses, right? And one woman that, I mean, amazing business um, she has. She, she does recycling and all of that. In fact, we had amazing businesses today in that forum. They pitched nice businesses and all of that. 
majority of them kept on talking about funds, right? You all know that when somebody in, introduces fresh funds into your business, that fund is supposed to be used to scale up your mm -hmm. business. So mm -hmm. you then have more capacity to do a lot more, generate more income, employ more people and all of that. So you see, I hear the part of Obasanjo taking us out of debt, uh, up in our reserves yeah. and all of that. And yes, this government, I don't know how far they've done with our reserves. I know it's really poor. The numbers are poor. I, I don't just have the figures now. Let you, I'll, I'll, I'll let you respond because you are the accountant. I'm sorry I can't be part of that. But I'm saying to you that not all the time um, are loans meant to be bad things because yeah. they are loans. They can actually create loans. I mean, take loans for infrastructures. But let me hear your thoughts quickly, then we'll go on a break. You're right. So um, liability financing is very critical for the growth of an organization. Mm -hmm. There are levels which you get to and you need that injected in your company in your to um, balance of the equity. So, but the problem is, you also rightly mentioned about returns on investment or returns. So when you're when you're taking this liability for in something which has no capacity to bring this adequate return so that you are able to net off the interest that is being yielded by the loan you've taken mm. and also even grow your own business, then that's where there's a problem. So that's where I raised the question. The monies that have been taken as loans to um, finance different projects, where are they? Where is the track record? Where is accountable? I hear um, things about um, embezzlement, people stealing funds. We are yet to see. It's almost how many years now? Eight years. Mm. I mean, it's enough. It's a long time for us to see those things, the loans that have been collected, start materializing. And even as at now, for something that has been up to eight years, by now we should see some considerable level of return on this investment, these things that are such that we can start paying off some of this debt. But why are we taking? Why are we still taking and taking and taking? Mm. When do we repay? There's a time which you take this liability and it's not, it becomes, so it's a balance. All right. Mm -hmm. When you keep taking this liability, there's a time you sink in it because you're unable to repay. Yes. And that's the point where we are now in Nigeria. We've taken too much and pain is now an issue. We don't even have plans. Okay, you know what? Let's go on a break. I want to hear your thoughts. I beg when I with God. <laughs> I don't want any insults. Keep we just brief. want to ask a question. Then if you say Buari is to be blamed, I want you to back your answer with proof. Tell us why. We'll go on a break. When we come back, we'll open our phone lines. Stay with us. <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out. Hey, <laughs> uh, we wait to find trouble, though. Is why the cause of uh, massive migration out of Nigeria? Is he to be blamed? That's the question we're asking tonight. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Now, our phone line is now open. The number to call. Please, people should call early. Don't wait till the end of the show. Before you start calling. <laughs> Dial Call it. us, dial it now. One is open now. Dial the number now. It's 0702500 That's the number to call. Um, 0702500749. Remember the rules, please turn off the volume of your television so we don't get any feedback, right? So, I mean, Lady, yeah, you will speak. I will allow you to speak. Don't worry. Today is for you people. I'm, I'm with you Thank all you. the way. But I just want us to... I, I, so, I, I hear you, um, Glory. So the issue, and that's where I want to, I, you see, you are falling into my trap deeper and deeper. Uh -huh. Yes, so there is a systemic issue of lack of transparency. Mm. There's a systemic issue of corruption mm. where people take funds and they do not tell us where these monies have gone, right? Mm -hmm. But you know what? Let me take our very first caller, then I'll come back to you, then I'll come to you, lady. Loma from Abia, thank you for joining us. Good evening. <laughs> My sister, good evening. I heard what you what you are telling us with the Quran. Now let me tell you. <laughs> I'm begging you. Know? All Christians, all Christians eat human flesh, but it is shark that bears the bad name. Mm. A lot of factors have contributed people migrating out of this country. But if we, I think, a retrospect. In 1984, our president entered December 83. In 1984, that was when he stabilized his government. 
Our president made life. His administration made life so difficult for people. The same migration. People were living because of the dealership tax. And the thing has replicated itself hmm. in this present administration. Hmm. So it is his leadership style. And the people that surrounded himself with, I will not blame him alone. No. <laughs> but the people that surround him, they are not giving him good advice. So that. for people migrating out of this country, a lot of people, the environment is no longer conducive. Right? So look at it. He is one of the people. He's one of it. Look at it. It's because of the he has not handled that so, that so strike uh, carefully. And that is why, you see, the thing has been lingering. So, uh, you will not blame Buhari for that, but the people that he uses doesn't know how to go through it. So, my answer to, or uh, uh, my solution is that, because you surround yourself with people you cannot change since 2015, that makes us to level uh, uh, that. Especially you, you are the one that makes people to migrate. Thank you very much. Okay, so in long and short, Buari is to be blamed. <laughs> okay, yes. so I, I, I was saying that, because um, I'll, I'll come to you. I, okay. I was saying that the system, right? I mean, Loma made some strong allegations. So he said, this is history repeating itself. Well, 1984, they never bombed me that time. I didn't <laughs> bomb me, I just <laughs> had one. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I was born a year after. We saw you yeah, I was so, not bothered at all. Yeah, I so, so, so I, but, but, but I remember that in 2015, my parents kept on saying that this is good that you people want to go and vote for. All our parents want all of us. But we were, no, we have to change, change. this country. We have to do all of that. But you see, I was saying to you that, so if we want to isolate the problem, the problem is not so much of an individual. It is a systemic problem. It is that there is lack of transparency. It is that there's corruption happening and all of that. So why do we still need to now point a finger mm. at one person? Okay. You want to quickly respond to that, the lady will come in. No, do you want to? Okay. No, before we respond, I just want to remember the words of the prophet fella. When he sang one song and he said, She na shagari alone we go blame. How about the other presidents? Mm. Hold on, let me take a caller. Um, That's where we are. Stephen from Lokoja, thank you for calling. Yeah, good evening, baby. Hi, good evening. Go ahead, you're live. Yes, Stephen from Bokoja. Go yes. ahead. Uh, Buhari is to be blamed. Ah. Uh, <laughs> if you listen or read about the submission of the wife, since she got married to him, oh what he has been treating him on. This is a man who went to war and uh, he had challenges. Even as a military head of state, he wasn't uh, ruling well. He never ruled well. He only takes, he just had this uh, quest to become, to, to become president. So, and that's why he used all means whatever is to force Nigerians to come to power. So ordinarily, when you look at him as a person, he doesn't have that um, memory to lead Nigeria. So mm. it is quite unfortunate. Those around him are creating more problems for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, the problem rests on him. Mm. If you have a good leader, Nigeria will not find itself, uh, herself where well. All right. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Stephen. Thank, thank you. you. All right. We want to quickly say um, something. In QMS, for those with quality management system, right, um, the top management are responsible for setting standards. So Buhari, let me put it this way, is part of the top management. He has capacity to set some to standards, yes. yes. So that is the reason why. So <laughs> we, I'm blaming him. So I'm, I know there's a system issue, but he also has capacity to set some standards and make some things work. Is he doing it? I'm not too sure about it. Mm. Yeah. So that is where. Back to yeah, the song. That, that's <laughs> <laughs> the song is called Overtake, Don't Overtake, Overtake. The reason why I refer to it is for me, that's where I learned a lot. I'm not just saying it for the sake of fairity. The things Fela spoke about in the 70s, even before I was born, with the same players still in government today, 
are still happening. In overtake, don't overtake, you overtake. He had said that President Shagari came and they were blaming him that the money in the treasury is gone. And that Shagari had said he met an empty treasury. And then he said, is it only Shagari we will blame? How about the ones before him? Which is, I think, the point you're trying to make. Buhari alone cannot be blamed for the jackpot. It started somewhere. And it started from our time of independence. Believe it or not, we've been messing this country up systematically, small by small. At times, we give a few bones to the dogs to make it seem like we're doing something. But at the end of the day, what we're actually keeping mm. from the table is much more than the few bones that you're throwing at us, the peasants. Okay, let me you take, take Solomon yeah, from Anambra State. I'll come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon, you're live. Hello, Anambra State. Hello, Anambra State. Hello, Anambra State. Solomon, go ahead. Yeah, help. Yeah, okay. Um, my contribution now centers on what your people have, have been saying. Uh, I may say that it uh, is a major problem that uh, is able to migrate from um, in their country to another country. Because um, it's it, it just like a stakeholder that are supposed to and have the right, the, the right position to put everything in order. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you, Solomon. I can't seem to make sense of what you're saying. But let me take Can a comment. Good, great and competent ladies, let me tell that people started leaving Nigeria when Buhari was military head of state in 1984. Let's not be sentimental and emotional about this topic. Mm. Nothing is working in our motherland. Hardship, hunger, starvation, impunity, to name a few. Do you know that statistics have shown that Nigeria and Congo has the largest population of poor people in the world? PMB should be blamed. He blamed GEJ too before. So he took over without the knowledge of governance and so he is to be blamed. So he says, remain blessed. Bobby Kennedy from Jalingo. Mm -hmm. I think we have a caller. Osita, thank you for calling. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. You're live. Yeah, uh, I want to comment on this uh, topic. Bari being blamed for massive migration. Yeah, it's of the truth. Bari is to be blamed for <laughs> massive migration. <laughs> my question, I want to answer it. I want to reply in this way that if a home is good, if your country is good, I can't see Buhari, I can't see anybody traveling or leaving the country. Mm. If your country is good, I can't see anybody, anybody traveling. I'm happy one of you, there, one of the presenters there said... Oh, sorry. Wait, you <laughs> network. Talk, you know? <laughs> it's okay, network. let me talk. <laughs> Go ahead. Like you said, if the country was good, people wouldn't leave. As America has experienced all sorts, older than us, bad presidents, Shady president. Americans wouldn't leave their country for anywhere else in the world. Most of them don't even have passports. They have no desire to see anywhere else, which is what we're talking about. Let's take more comments. <laughs> um, this from Ade he said, Good evening, ladies. Buari is not the cause of Nigeria migrating. Nigeria started migrating before Andrew. Don't check out <laughs> don't and there, thereafter. Buari is. Barry's blame is that you don't get to office or a leadership role you can't perform. He's born and bred as a military man to engage in external war. Mm -hmm. All our military men are not supposed to be in governance, but stay in barracks. Mm -hmm. However, it's a conf... <laughs> Why are you laughing? What the uh, I, I don't think I should read that. Out of... <laughs> so that's, that's the comment. Use wisdom, somebody. use wisdom. Use wisdom. Let me take Michael from Lagos. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, you're live. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, you're live. Go ahead. Okay. I uh, want to contribute to the topic. Go ahead, please. Yeah. The, I want to say that Buhari should not be blamed for that. Okay. I rather blame Nigeria. You cannot have bad government where you have a, 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 a good people. Nigeria, majority of Nigeria, you are and into power. 
we are constantly realizing who he is, maybe at the late hour. So it's not to worry that actually Nigerians to learn how to put the right set of human beings into power, not to put uh, based on the tribalism and religious big gospel. So all that was intended. I think I'm beginning to discuss it now. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Michael. You said we should blame ourselves, Abi. God bless you. I think I'm having some people that are coming to my side. To your way. Because I thought I was outnumbered today. But let's okay. take more comments. Buhari obviously is to be blamed for people leaving this country because we do not have two precedents, but one, and it is Buhari. He ran the country to the ground with the kind of people he, was, he surrounded himself with. Buhari is supposed to fight insecurity for us. He's supposed to fight it in total. <laughs> so, but insecurity is all over the place. If I have opportunity to run away before 2023, I will do so now. Because 2023, many Nigerians will not be alive. Things will... This English stuff. Things will get real bad and even worse. Nigeria environment is not conducive for anyone to live in. I am sanctuous. Also, one of the reasons why massive jackpot is the system of education is poor. I saw a Twitter, a tweet when a student in the UK said that there are about 68 students in the in the class, of which about 51 are Yoruba. Sorry, the English let is me take, Let me take. Um... Also Fagos. Austin I, uh, from Lagos. Andrew from Lagos. Andrew, Hello? you're live. Go ahead. Yeah. Let me explain something. You see, employment, Nigerians are employing politics, politicians. And these politicians that you are employing are not qualified. Look for somebody that has the knowledge. We are, we are not tribal, we are, we are playing tribalism which does not work. What we need is people who can make this country good. We must have a plan that we must begin to work on. Japan or no Japan is not our problem. But the problem is repair the country in such a way that everybody will be comfortable and Buhari is not our problem. Thank you. When we were about to vote for him, we were told that he was not qualified. Mm -hmm. But we refused. We voted for him. Based on sentiments. So what do we want now? People are talking of Obi, mm -hmm. not because he's an evil man, but because of what he can do. Mm -hmm. Because when you can do a job, you will have people who can work with you. But if you go picking people from the gutter to work for, it's like picking a carpenter mm. to be a mechanic. To be a doctor. Thank you, my brother. Uh, wait, wait, uh, let me finish my point. Thank you so much. Because you see, some people are understanding where I'm going with this conversation. And they have gone ahead of me. And this is the point I'm trying to make. Tell yourself that you... So, so, you see, we have this problem in this country where we try to push blames on other person. Now, because of this person, I make me the doom. No. We need to get to that point where we own our mistakes. Do you understand? We have been very poor in selecting the kinds of people that lead us. Right? So, they say that Nigerians deserve the kind of leadership that they get. Is that a true statement? The answer is yes. Because Nigerians are not ready to do what it takes to get great leaders on that seat. So my point is, be it anybody that is seated on that seat, we are very quick tomorrow to say, ah, is this person that caused it? No. Let us begin to hold these people by the jugular and say, you have to be accountable to us, right? Then they will force themselves to create systems of transparency that reduces a bit of corruption and all of that and put sanctions to some of these things, then we are ready for we are ready for life. But we can't keep waking up and saying, eh, it's because it's this person that did this thing to me, that's why I'm going. Eh, it's this person that did this thing, that's why I'm going. We will continue to we will continue to sing that song. Come 2500. Yeah. Let me take a caller, please. No best. <laughs> then I'll come to you, then we finalize this show. I'm going to my house. I'll let you from Hello, good evening. Thank you for calling. You're live. Go ahead. Okay. 
Oh, what I have to say on this. Go ahead. Buhari, I wouldn't entirely blame it on him, but out of 100%, I would say it's 40% blame. Okay. As a leader, you have certain roles to play. You are a leader for a reason. The more you keep blaming other people for a role you chose to take, you are no longer a leader. You are more like a sheep. Buhari, besides the governors and people who were elected alongside with him, voted, he appointed some people definitely to do certain things to work with his government. Now, do you select people who are going to do certain things for you that will work for you? Or you select people who will work for things that will make the country move forward? That, those are two questions. Then I will ask, those people who are working, I hear people say, ah, you are not aware, uh, the president is not aware of what is going on in the country. You are a president of a particular country and you are not aware of what is going on. Okay, if you are not aware, why can't you sit back in your country and be aware? Oh, yeah. You Thank get you. feedback of whatever it is that is going on, wherever it is you need correction, mm. you will correct. Mm. But I know that, yes, there are presidents or people who have been traveling out, rulers who have been traveling out. Mm. That is common. But a point where you count the number of times the president has been in the country and the times he has been out of his particular government. And the times he has been out is more than the times he has been in his country. It's an error. Thank you so much, Oliver. Because when you are in your country, you will know certain things to do to go right. You might not complete it 100%, mm. but you'll be able to know where to do things right. And as people in the country, we make a lot of error because we want people to be perfect, quite all right. You can actually do things to make our own lives better. Absolutely. But when the government yeah. also does not make economy better for those who are actually trying to strive, then we have to jack back. Mm. Thank you, you so much, Oli Thank you, <laughs> Let me put it in that way. They Thank have you, to think for themselves in other ways. But when this government, people, president, governors, they make things okay in their own state and country. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, 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 you oh, Thank you. If you make health okay for people, you, they are the only one to be country, but you don't make that available and okay. So you cannot stay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please, let's try to keep our calls very short. Go ahead. Glory. Glory. Yeah. Um, um, this is from Austin. He said, I totally concur with the submission by the two ladies, by the two ladies there, that things are, ha that things are handled differently overseas than here. If not that I'm already a grandfather, why can't I consider the option? Yes, there is global economic crisis, but how do we get out of the woods? Our government run by Buari will politicize it, blaming PDP government, no sincerity. Even as I'm watching this program, I can see one of the stories scrolling. I inherited a country with bombs going off in cities. Buari, so he's saying Buari said that. Is it not annoying he's telling me that security is, is too much, it's too much or something? So anyways, that's the okay. comment from. The answer is yes. If these things are happening under his administration, then he is. I don't think that if Nigeria is good, people will waste their money to buy tickets and travel out. Mm -hmm. To whom much is given, much is expected. People expected a change in his administration, but he failed to deliver. We are very poor in selecting our leaders. That is another point. My name is Daniel Ilio, Ways Regular Fan. Thank you so much. Let's take your final comments quickly. You have a... Um, so, yes, um, the reason why I said Buari is to be blamed is because as a leader, he has authority to effect some changes. Mm. And it's from that aspect I'm saying he is to be blamed. Absolutely. Go ahead. One my second. comments will switch to the Peter Obi point we made. Last week, we told you also that, he, that only one person can be there. So when he gets there, if he gets there, he's the one we will blame, not because he's a messiah, but we won't know until we've tried something else. Yeah. All right. So... Let me take one final comment. One of the reasons why Massive Jackpa is the system of education is the system of education is poor. I saw a Twitter, uh, a tweet when a student in the UK was saying that there are about 68 students and 51 out of those students are Nigerians. So any parents that see any, an opportunity that will favor their children and future. So as far as I am concerned, Buhari, both Buhari and his administration are to be blamed. Oh, well, you're looking amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> wait, 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 I have to check that. Then someone <laughs> says, um, Buhari is not to be blamed. What if there was no COVID or the war in Ukraine for us? 
the uh, the northeast we have, is the best thing that ever happened to us i encourage any of you to visit the lekki deep sea port and the new airport i hope the people in the southeast will be happy with the second niger delta bridge when they travel we're so sorry we can't take more messages but thank you ladies i think we had a fantastic yeah. conversation we did we will do a part let's go to you let me go and think it very well let's go and marry you <laughs> before we go i show you follow us on instagram twitter everywhere TikTok at way show africa you can interact with us further Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. I think it's clear enough. We'll see you guys at 8 p.m. tomorrow as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.